Okay, today we're going to practice writing equations of lines, an eighth grade topic. I wrote myself an agenda so I can make sure that I cover everything. And I just pulled this out of my hair because I'm going to go swimming in it a little bit, so I don't really need this anymore. And these are the things we need. We need to know the equation of a line is in the form y equals mx plus b. M is the slope, B is the y-intercept. Intercept means where something crosses the y-axis. So that means the value for x is going to be 0, and then the value for y is whatever it is for the value of y, which we also use the letter B. Why does it start with a B? I don't know. Why does it start with an M? I don't know. But slope, by the way, is rise over run, otherwise known as the change in y over the change in x and if I was going to be really specific change means difference so it's the difference between the y's and the x's it does not matter which y or x you start with it matters that you stick with the same pattern when you go to do it okay so I have this packet and I've got a whole bunch of pages of practice some problems are already done you should check them out I'm going to do a few problems from the practice section and then you could do the homework later. If you need more practice, it's there for you to do and the key is there for you to check. So let's see. I highlighted everything from my agenda in there so I wouldn't miss it. So here's some more notes. See how they got football players here because interception is where the football player crosses the path of the football and the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the path of the y-axis. And the x value is 0 and the y value is whatever value you can read on there. Okay, it's got the slope written out again. And then it's got a whole bunch of cool algebra to show you what happens when you rearrange using math, not magic, the slope formula. So all this is work for rearranging the slope formula and then putting it into another form, y equals mx plus b, which is the equation for a line. Something is a line if it has constant slope. Lines have constant slope. If the slope changes, it wouldn't be a line anymore. It would be some kind of curve. Okay? So, constant rate of change, constant slope. Oops, let's remember that. Slope and rate of change are the same. This should look very familiar. We did um, a whole section on proportional relationships. A proportional relationship is a line, a straight line, specifically through the origin. So, the y-intercept is always zero which is why the equations for proportional relationships look like this and the slope m is also called the constant of proportionality k and I did the same thing y over x equals k what happens when you move x out the way y equals kx okay so these two things are related seventh grade does proportional relationships only eighth grade will include lines that don't go through the origin that do not have a constant unit rate this does not have a constant unit rate but it does have a constant rate of change. They are not the same thing necessarily all the time. So here's some examples that we're going to go through very quickly. Remember, our equation for a line is in the form y equals mx plus b. It helps to see the equation written out. So like factory work, I went down the line to get it done faster. Slope is m and b is y-intercept. So that would mean that in question a, the slope is negative 5 and the y-intercept is 3. The slope is not x. The slope is not y. The y-intercept is not y. Okay? The slope is the number in front of x when you have one y solved all by itself. When 1y is alone, the slope is a number in front of x. This is a 1y all alone. These things are going to matchy matchy. The slope is 1 fourth. The y-intercept is a negative 6. Just because it says plus b doesn't mean I can't do plus a negative. Okay? So over here, the slope is a negative, um, but I need a number. 
there is a number that has invisibility power and that is the number one and the y-intercept is five and I want you to check this out I don't have to have it all nice and lined up like I did for these examples I could have had this equation written let's say with commutative property I could have written this backwards a positive five and a negative five x reversed with commutative property it doesn't change the slope the slope is still the number in front of x and then the y-intercept is what's added to it when there is one y because eventually I'm gonna give you questions where there isn't one y and you have more algebra to do but we're doing simple algebra for now okay and you don't have to write any of this down if you don't want to the answer key is provided so just follow along so on the next page I have a graph my agenda to look at a graph and write the equation of the line. This might my, my agenda, my overall agenda is write the equation of a line. Equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept. That would be right here where y is negative 2. m is the slope. Well, they didn't give me the slope and don't pay attention to this, this is a different question. I have to find the slope. Slope is the rise over the run. So I'm going to need two points to get the slope and a point should be a easy to read and obvious. It needs to be obvi or don't use it, okay? Like this point right here is not obvious. It's some kind of fraction or decimal. I don't want to use that. I want to use one that crosses the grid perfectly. They made it obvious for you. You might have to find the point yourself. Okay, so I'm going to go one, two, I need to make a triangle. One, two, three, four, five up. And that's positive. One, two, three to the right. Don't forget, that's not the only triangle I could have drawn. I could have started here and gone down. One, two, three, four, five. I go down until I can reach the point. And then one, two, three to the left. This is a triangle. Here's my triangle. I got two triangles. Both of them work because when you divide two negatives, you're going to get a positive anyway. Okay? But this is more simple. This is simpler looking. Stick with the simpler looking one. But that doesn't mean you can't do this differently, okay? So that, that reviews slope. So I have 5 thirds that I substitute in for m, and there's my equation. y equals 5 thirds x minus 2, or plus a negative 2. It's the same thing. Okie dokies. I know sometimes this has lag, so I'm kind of waiting to flip my pages here. So I got more pages. I'm not going to do a problem on this page right now. I'm going to go through this one though. Writing linear equations. This is nice step by step process. It happens to start with a table and then it asks you, is this relationship linear? If you remember from my other page, something is linear if it has a constant rate of change or a constant slope. Constant rate of change is my question, otherwise known as slope. So if we're going to find the slope, we need to do the change in y over the change in x. Okay? And I can write this out with a nice equation, but I can also draw it right on my table. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to draw it right on the table instead of doing y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. I have lots of points to choose from. There are how many points in this table? There are four points. A point, remember, goes x comma y. So I have 1 comma 13, 2 comma 22, 3 comma 31, 4 comma 40. So um, I'm just going to go left to right, which means I have to stick with that pattern from 13 to 22. So I would be doing this in my formula, 22 minus 13, you know what, I'll write it down. I'll write it down, 22 minus 13, and then 2 minus 1. And I get 9 over 1. 
Now, I don't know if this is linear unless they're all the same slope. So let's try the next one. So this is up one, up nine. This one goes up one, 22 to 31, that's another nine. So, so far so good, we haven't failed yet. Up one, up nine. Yes, M equals nine. Constant rate of change, the slope is nine. The slope is nine. Choose an ordered pair. Choose a point. And then we're going to substitute it in the graph. It does not matter what point you choose because every point is on the line. So I'm going to choose the one with the number 1. 1, 13. X before Y, alphabetical order. Independent, dependent. The, no, the cost depends on the people. They're not always going to label that for you. You're going to have to know this. People are independent. The cost depends on how many people because we're talking about um, going to the zoo. So now we're gonna substitute in values. And, and we know a Y, it's right here. We know an X, it's right there. We know an M, it's right there. So where there's Y, I'm gonna put 13. The slope was nine and the X coordinate was one. Now you're going to solve. We just started um, algebra, so this is a pretty easy one to solve. Simplify before solving. So if you can go forwards, go forwards before going backwards. 9 times 1 is 9. So I have 13 equals 9 plus B. I need to get B by itself. The plus 9 is in the way, so the opposite of a plus 9 is a minus 9. You have to do it to the left and do it to the right so you don't cause a fight. Drop it like a hot, see what you got. 13 minus 9, I'm just going to use my calculator for everything, is 4. Four. Now I know that the y-intercept is 4, and I can write the equation for a line because it's y equals mx plus b, where m is 9 and b is 4. And I can now graph this pretty darn easy using point and slope because I know that the y-intercept is where it starts before any people even get to, into the park, it's going to cost $4. And then every per extra person is $9. So uh, we got 113. My, the graph counts by four, so it's a bit of an estimate here. To 22, well 22 I can estimate easier because it's half between 20 and 24. 331, every time I'm going up 9 and right 1, that is my slope, it is my rate of change, 440, that's an easy one. This does not go into negatives because there are no negative people, some graphs will. This graph is a quadrant 1 only graph where the x's and y's are on positive. Nobody's uh, no negative money, no negative people, so quadrant one only. Okay, so you might not have known this, but what we just did was we did um, graphing the equation using two points because I used the two points to get the slope and then I plugged in a point with the slope to get the y-intercept. I used two points to get the slope, I plugged the slope and a point into the linear equation to get the y-intercept and finished, okay? So we can cross that off the agenda. Write an equation given two points. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to check my work showing you this cool thing that we did before on the calculator. So this is a, this is a table, right? So I'm gonna press the table button. I'm gonna type in my equation and see if it's right. 9x, this is the only time you get to use the x button because other times you're going to get wrong answers because this one's actually a variable. Nine, uh, y equals 9x plus 4, press enter. Let's start at 0. Let's count by 1s and do it automatically. So, 0, 4, I got that on my graph. 113, there it is, 222, 331, 440. All my stuff matches what was on the paper. My equation must be correct. 
All right, I think I'll do one more. Or one more? I'll do one more. I was going to do another one with two points, but I already did one, so. Um, let's do one that gives you the point and the slope. So that would be less work than the one we just did because I don't have to find the slope from the two points. I am given the slope. All you need to remember is slope is m. The point is going to give you an x and a y value. And you need to know that linear functions or linear equations are of this form. They follow this form. y equals mx plus b. Give me a y. Give me an m. I should use parentheses when I substitute. Give me an x that's in, that's in the question. And give me a b. You can't give me the b yet. We don't have it. We don't know the y-intercept yet. So you must simplify before you solve. A negative half times a negative one, put it in the calculator. It's going to come out positive half. And then you want to get b by itself, so one half's got to go. And the opposite of a positive half is a minus half. Two minus a half is one and a half for the y-intercept, making my final answer y equals, replace the m with what they gave you. The x is always changing, so you have different points, but the y-intercept is always the same, one and a half, okay? y equals mx plus b. The x and y are variables because they have different points that follow this rate of change and this y-intercept, okay? Leave the variables variables. m and b are constants. They stay the same. Constant rate of change, constant. b is a constant, the y-intercept. Okay, I'm going swimming now. See you later.